What's that other colour? What's this one? This one is alizarin. One. This one is, it's an alizarin, it doesn't say alizarin carmine, but I think it is because it's this super browny, purpley. I was assuming that it was okay, um, warm, but I don't, yeah, it is warm. It's got a really, really red base. This is got a lump in it. What I'm going to do is just get you being loose by creating really fast, loose backgrounds. And you'll need your spray bottle. As I mentioned, I've got a spare one if you don't have one. Just go back to this one here. Now I'm gonna spray it and get them to mix. You're welcome to squeeze out more paint if you're enjoying the process. You're welcome to do your own if you have a your waterproof board, most of you do. Uh, that's all you need is a waterproof board to do this. And uh, you, <laughs> this is taking me a long while with this little mm -hmm. tiny spritzy bottle. And now I'm gonna mix them a little more. Just mix that together. And we're going to come up with a cool background and a warm background. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, that's better. In watercolour, you tend to work from light to dark. So you want to keep that in mind when you do some backgrounds, that you want a light background. So this one I'm going to spray because then that will make that colour even lighter. And as I say, as you get your paper and you spray, feel free to get out more um, paper, uh, more paint at any time. So I've got one instant background and that one's cool. Then I'm going to get another one. In printmaking you use oils, but it's, um, and it's, you use a press and it's way more laboured than this little lovely quickie. And here's my warm background. Whether you touch it or you don't is completely up to you. You get a slightly different look. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. That's <laughs> Hi, Virginia. <laughs> I remembered. <laughs> yes, I remembered. There. And then I've got two instant backgrounds. But is it light enough? Because it's going to be a background. We want it light so that we're going to be able to add some beautiful colour to it later. It might be a landscape. It might be something else. So this one is lovely and light, and we know it dries 10 to 15% lighter again. So I don't need to touch that one, I'm just gonna let it dry. This one, however, has a quite a dark patch there, so I might just remove a bit, um, because it might just be a touch too dark. How's what are that? We, what are we aiming for here? <laughs> right, these are backgrounds, because we're doing landscapes. Thank you for asking that question. <laughs> Have you got I've got it all in my head. <laughs> You've got a picture of where we're going to. That's why she's doing YouTube, so she can edit it with the problem. That's right. That's <laughs> why I like editing. <laughs> it turns out. I have an image. This is next week's. Um, oh, right. Okay. Is that what you did on YouTube? Uh, a version. It's just another oh, photo that. like that. That's good. Yeah, thank you. That had the little uh -huh. people. Because yeah, that was the other the request right. last term. Right. Abstract landscapes and people. Yeah. So we're going to do landscapes and then we're going to lead into putting the people into the oh. landscape. Uh, so this is where I'm heading. But this won't be till next week because you might all have... Thank you, Lynn. That's awesome. You might have a landscape that you'd like to work from and you, that you would like to work from that has meaning for you. I find if you work from a photograph that has meaning, you've been there, you took the photograph, or whatever the meaning is behind it, so often the holiday snaps, uh, that when you get into the process of painting, it's more enjoyable and you can go deeper, faster, if you're looking at a beautiful painting that has some sort of memory associated with it. So that's why this will be next week. If you don't want to bring one, I've got heaps here. If you like this one, you'll use this. If you, if you forget, use this. But um, I recommend printing it. Having it on your phone means that you spend time mm. going touch, touch, wet, mm. touch, touch, touch. So printing it um, can be... Uh, battery reset. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
Um, also, the, in terms of what we're doing, is grasses. So today will be all about grasses. We're going to get some backgrounds down, we're going to practice grasses, we're going to possibly put some landscape marks into these ones. So that's why I recommend doing at least four. Please do, and that's why I've gone cheap, because sometimes it helps to release the, 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 the tightness we get about, oh my, all that expense. It's sometimes go cheap, it can release you. <laughs> Not looking at anybody. It's really common, really, it really. Is. It's normal, I, I, I find. You just turn it over, paint the other side. Yeah, yeah, which you can do on nice paper, can't you? That's yeah, the value yeah. of um, nice paper. So these could turn into an abstract landscape background. This might be a dusty, beautiful sky. This might be something you turn into flowers later because it doesn't speak to landscape of you. You will decide later. But I recommend perhaps if you all start with two and then we can refresh the paint, yeah. you can do your own. If you've got your own board, then do your own in your own colours because you might have a lovely format that you're thinking. I'm thinking also that quite nice to explore warm and cool because sometimes when you get to that end of your painting and you're resolving it, sometimes you can think about switching sides of the colour wheel, that there's a mass of warm and a bit of cool can just make this enormous difference or the opposite, that you've got a mass of cool and then a bit of um, warmth. So, for this one, I will continue with cool colours as I build some, um, possibly some cling wrap. We'll um, do a bit of cling wrap ne next week as well. Thinking of next week, bring something bigger if you, and nice quality. Mm -hmm. um, bigger, nice, it, it'll be whatever size you want. It's always whatever size you want. A4 is, um, um, I, for me, it's the minimum. If you go smaller, I find it harder, not easier. And you might save paper, but it's then the detail, everything about it gets tight and it's the opposite of loose. Of course, if that's what you want, then do that. Always do whatever you want. It's, it, you're the most important person in the room. I've got some burnt sienna. I'm thinking about this lovely earthy colours on the handout. I've got Lunar Earth, which is a very expensive thing to do to play with. Can I put on <laughs> gold? Uh, this is a bird You're not sienna. The <laughs> 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 You're both stinky. No, no. <laughs> this is a Mission Gold burnt sienna. It's another beautiful brand. There are so many uh, quality brands. The first thing I'm going to do is the masking fluid so it can dry. So I'm going to do that one first and see whether the pen, yeah, it's very good at that. Just practicing and every time bottom up and then I get thin line at the end. And pretty much I do that with every brush as well. Um, some of these examples have multiple layers on them, so I'm going to do that next. Get a little bit of this burnt sienna. You'll use any colour you feel like using. It has a lovely soft um, background and then some colour on top. So a bit of, oh not that one, that's got masking fluid in it. I'm going to put it over there so I can't reach it. Thank you. I'm just going to soften off the top so it goes to nowhere. Uh, then when that dries I can do this one. This one here is the fan brush. Thank you, Colleen. Where is Colleen? There she is. Uh, so I'm going to start with the dry brush first to see, and perhaps that's what this one is, where you go like this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a nifty brush, isn't it? Yeah. What's that brush? Is that called a fan? Yeah. Where did it come from? Using that. Every week you've got a brush, and that actually turned out yeah. really well. Yeah. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, I'm just being playful there and thinking about this example. These are grasses that lay over, but I didn't really do that, but you'll do exactly as you please. Uh, these are really, really short ones. I wonder whether this one does short ones as well. Oh, yeah, maybe if I push it up. Oh. I've dipped straight into the thick stuff, and then I'm going to go... Actually, that'd be good for waves too, wouldn't it? Yeah. A brush? 
wouldn't it? Just some thicker stuff at the base because often there's some sort of little um, shadow or sometimes just putting a dark colour at the base of a rock, a mountain, a whole range of things can kind of ground it. So I'll go back here and put in a little bit on top. So there are the background ones and there are the foreground ones. I love this one. I'm moving towards this one. This is on a background, very similar. You'll work that out. I'm going to suggest that you try as many or as few as you uh, feel like, but I love this one in particular. So I'm going to... Oh. So if we haven't got a fan brush, how would we... Oh yeah, I know, I've just been continuing. I'm going to run. Thank you, Bia. It's lovely that you do that. Yeah, that's right. It's more on the edge. But yeah, thank, thank you so much for saying that. So I'm going to go to a round brush. So this one has these beautiful grasses like this. Oh, the, the fan brush is awesome. <laughs> oh, I'm missing it now. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm going to go to a flat. Yeah, that's right. Flat and get some... I'm rotating this way and that way. Yep, I think that fan brush wins. <laughs> that's interesting. Uh, right, so I've got some of these grasses here and then they come up with really pale ones and again they build. This is, I've used this sort of thing in the front of landscapes over and over and over again because if you put something like that with those hard lines in the foreground, <clears throat> excuse me, it says, I'm in the foreground, and then it pushes other elements back into your painting. So I'm just putting in some lovely soft background. They've actually used yellow, that's lovely. Could nice use. Pardon? That's not a yellow now, Yeah, it's so pale, isn't it? Uh, and then get a bit thicker. Let's get to it. Yeah. <laughs> the thing about it is that it's got this fat end and a thin end, so you can use both. So it's too wet at the moment, and all I'm doing is bruising, which is still nice. Bruising, bruising, move the paint around. But I need to wait a little bit longer, or po possibly have my paint a little thicker, or I'll try this end, see if I can get... There you go, the thicker end is moving it, but that doesn't really look like a grassy mark. So I need to stick with this end, but I need to wait about a minute. This is not dry. You can tell by touching it. Just speed up the process there, taking off the wet bits. Normally I just like it to air dry. That top one there looks really wet, that one. Mm. I'll just give it another minute now. The thinner it is, the quicker it dries. Makes no difference to its efficacy. If you did multiple ones of the thick one on that. Oh yeah. So that you get the thicker grasses. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or the edge is the grass. The edge of it. Oh yeah. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Worth playing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. None of it looks like that beautiful <laughs> lift out. It's a windy day. <laughs> but it's best if you take that one away. I think. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You've got nothing to compare it to. Yeah. Okay, so none of that's going to go it's on my brush good. now. And I love my brushes. So I don't like to get any masking fluid on it. But because I haven't left it cure for a bit longer, I'm going to wash my brush immediately. And I do find it comes off quite quickly. Actually, they've done quite landscapey marks, but it wouldn't matter. You do exactly as you please. Oh, there's some masking fluid there. So again, I'm going to put some dark marks at the base. Use a combo that way. Um, I'm holding my brush up there too. If you do this, you will. You, you might do it beautifully, but I find. I, oh, see, oh, yeah. little fat end. Yeah. If, if even when if I do this and I'm only able to flick with my wrist, it's not beautiful. But if I go up there, you get this flicky mark. Yeah, yeah. It's quite lovely how you lose well, control. I went to a Chinese yeah. a painting class, and yeah. that's, we spent two hours doing that. Oh. <laughs> ah, was it fun? All in, wax on, all wax in the. It's the arm. Oh. And then the final. Was that here? Did the Chinese? No, it was over in Belrose. Something. I took my son, who's quite good at art, and it was just so 
boring. Um, <laughs> was he? You know, you Did just speak had to go Chinese? and two hours to get... His concept was you had to get your brain yeah. into doing yeah. this. Um, oh. You wax on, wax off. It's hard to make, your brain, it's hard it's hard to make them change, isn't it? Mm. <coughs> so I'm doing back into doing that one. Yeah. So there's a light, soft background, and then I'm going to build... I'll let them dry, then go in with a darker one, and then I'll get some thicker marks. If I go in now, they'll mix a little bit, so thicker stuff. I do this all the time with my paint. I've got a fat um, dollop of paint sitting on the edge, and over here I've got really wet paint, really light tone, because there's lots of water, and the closer I get to the base of that lovely lump, I get this beautiful paint that's thick, dark, but also wet, nicely wet, ready for that. So that one's got three layers. What I love mostly, the biggest thing I learnt out of this, because I actually saw this years ago, is that it stopped me doing this. Because if you do grasses without looking at grass, I did a lot of oh, yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. And it turns out they don't look like that. Oh. Yeah, they look like this. They're messy things. They. And they don't really have a clump. Um, well, they might. But some might. Some might. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Than a number of clumps. Mm. Yes, yeah. that's right. And when you put a whole stack together, they don't. Weeds clump. Mm. Yeah, they don't do. <laughs> they look like the ones I used to do my grass that's so when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. 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 And when I began, you know, like that. yeah, that's Lots right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, Please enjoy practicing. So I ended with a rigger. I did some with my round brush because it's got a beautiful point. If you've got a fan brush, um, then do that. I'm going to go and get a coffee if someone wants to borrow that brush. Uh, <laughs> while I'm gone, you're welcome. I recommend um, starting with uh, a bit of masking fluid. Let me know if you want some masking fluid. I've got some in a big bottle you can have. This is yours? The photograph? Yeah. I just can't remember. I take a thousand photos every time I see anything I like. So it's probably Cronulla-ish. Oh, is it? That's... I liked it because of the um, boat. I've just realised the horizon line is wonky though. I just. <laughs> Well, that's the photographer. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sorry. What do you mean, wonky? Look, the water's trying to proceed. Luckily, you can go the same way. That's, that's it. I know, it's brilliant, yeah, isn't it? I love it. The effort that you used to have yeah. to change a photograph. <laughs> um, so, the, whether you work with this one next week or you bring your own, one of the first things I'm going to get you to do is a quick line drawing because you start to want, I want you to think about the. Um, ratios for example my sky goes there and then I've got a land form there and a fabulous little boat I love how that's yeah. breaking that line and then I've got a little triangle love triangles in landscapes then I've got the um, the pool that I've never swum in but I watch people swimming in it <laughs> just looking at it, it's nice yeah. <laughs> Too. Right. There's a bunch of ladies that swim there every morning. Oh, really? Yeah, they're called the jelly beans. Yeah. Called the what? With the jelly beans, I think. caps on. Yeah, pink. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. They it. swim in the pool or in the and ocean? Christmas so, Christmas loads Christmas of people swimming in the ocean as well. Oh, I think they're in the pool. Massive amounts of people yeah. swimming. Yeah. Do you know what I Yeah, yeah. Well. And then, wonderful yeah. grasses. So, these grasses go from there to there, so I won't be painting that. That that will look odd. So I'll be thinking about stuff like, well, maybe I have some here, and maybe in fact I make some of them go up. And sometimes it's quite lovely to cross that line if you don't have a boat or something tall, or you might have a tree. Trees are awesome for breaking the lines. Otherwise, you will get band, 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 band. You need verticals. When you're looking through your photographs, it's, you need some sort of vertical and it could be a boat, it could be grass, it could be a tree, but you really, it's just a bit more interesting. Yeah, carrot person. 
Yeah, that's right. Could be the carrot version. <laughs> Uh, so that was my first pass, and then I'll do it again and go, okay, I really like that ratio. And then I've got this beautiful line here, and so this one will be pretty flat, but it's nicely broken up by the land, and I don't want, that's about 50-50, I don't want it to end there, so either I go further or I go shorter. Maybe the boat's over here. So you'll play with your basic shapes. And then I love this triangle. So in this one, I was putting in all this little detail, but I might skip it and then you go. Lighter, yes, you can, that's, that's right. And then I've got these beautiful grasses and then maybe these cross it. Maybe there's some over here, maybe there's a little bit. You can put a sunday in. And <laughs> yeah, totally. A little nice. carrot line there. Sideways carrot. Yeah. I've <laughs> <laughs> that carrot tutorial on YouTube. I've done it. Out really yeah. I know. I've oh, done good. A whole, I did a whole page of the yeah. book. Oh, good. Good. Skin, but yeah. Well, it was really good. Yeah, I got the eye from, idea from Pinterest. Right. But yeah. I, I must YouTube. watch it on YouTube. Yeah. And there's another lady, she does arches. Arches is the top part. Arches. And then a W. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen pictures of that, so I know what you're yeah. describing. Yeah. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with that thumbnail. That's the your your step one is to do a couple of thumbnails and dramatically simplify because you don't have to put everything. Oh, in. so you don't have to do that. Yeah. No, exactly. no. These are um, abstract landscapes, so we're abstracting it down to oh. simple, simple shapes. And we put in as oh, much detail as you like later, but I'm going to be dramatically simplifying the whole thing. But I, I don't mind this. I quite like this coming over here. Um, it actually breaks the line a little bit as well. It comes down past. Oh, yeah. I like those little things that um, break stuff up. You could include an extra one, invent other triangles as well. Triangles are awesome in landscapes. So this isn't flat, I've uh, angled it. It actually is naturally angled. And then we'll use some, where have I put the glad wrap? And the glad wrap might go in the foreground. The glad wrap might go for your sky and Bo Blockley does skies with glad wrap that look amazing. You might do glad wrap for your water, it does look very good as water. So what do you mean? Yeah, what, what are you, are you doing, doing with the glad wrap? Just get it. Yeah. Putting it on yeah. where you can. Yeah. Yeah. No. Just stretch it and put it on. So you, yeah. yeah, you could use wax paper. I'll do it now. Because if you like it, you'll do it as a little practice. You don't need much. This is the stupid, stupid, stupid redesigned you know, package. Worse. The mm. Audi King Lab, oh my god, <laughs> with the float across the kitchen, the tear off. <laughs> it's it's, it's so shocking. Glad. It doesn't yes. work on the plastic Yeah, oh, yeah totally, can't. yeah. It I'm just tear using on that up thing. Because and I still yeah. have it. But I actually don't use it. Me too, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to be good. In little ways. You didn't have to invent other ways of spelling things. So say I'm going to use this. I chose the one I liked the least. And I'm not gonna draw it on with the pen, but I, I'll just put in some indications. Here will be my sky and here. I quite like that actually, yeah. because this space is different to this space, which is different to that space. All those things make your painting more lively, more interesting. Whereas if you go equal, equal, huh. equal, you it's, it's Boring. yeah, Boring. and static, yeah. yeah. So the glad wrap could be a sky, it could be a foreground, or let's say it's gonna be the water. I'm gonna use, this is my warm background, so I know it's not logical that I give the water a, a warm color, but I'm gonna go warm and then warm and then at the end some cool, see if I can bring it together with some cool. So I've got this lovely burnt sienna, so this will be perfect. <laughs> lovely burnt sienna water. water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was saying it just seems right. counterintuitive. <laughs> it's an abstract. It's very yes. abstract. Yeah. The tea right. tree water. Like up around Noosa. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh there's blue on that. 
I'm going to wet my water. It goes along like that. I'm doing it really delicately. I don't want to disturb this layer underneath. What I want is to be able to put paint on it. So I'm gliding and going very, very gently. And then I'm going to put in this beautiful burnt sienna. The paint will stay where the water is. Mm. Burnt sienna. Just tip it about a little bit. It's mm. totally experimental. <laughs> and then you do the, the reason why you're not going to do this today is we've only got a little exactly, and then you'll be transporting stuff. Oh but God. It'll we'll, be a mess. Yeah, uh, we'll make this the beginning of next week, and then it will be dry within a short period of time. So you see how the paint completely stays where I put the water, and then if I and it fries with the creases. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, really lovely, yeah. So you could use it for the mountain, the sky. As I say, Anne Blockley, I'll try to remember to bring her book in because she's got this sky with... Oh, this is so much more fun than trying to do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I tried to plant some seed the other week. Was it all? Oh. She's I glad it Yeah, I know. Yeah, turn that one over. And wax paper is the other thing you can use. You could also use alfoil, but of course, under alfoil, you can't see it. Can't see what's happening. Oh. No. no. Somebody no. put in. Mm. So you really so you spread the paint, paint out. I am because I'm actually not so much the paint, thank you for asking that, but the I want wave like marks that are. From the plastic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that are like that. Especially in the. Yeah. So and up here. Yeah, up here they're very flat, yeah. and then as they come down, you see they get how you, more ripple. yeah, and they ah. so then I'll attempt, <laughs> attempt, you know, some little angled marks like that. We don't know; it's an experiment, and then you leave it in place till it's pretty much dry. Oh, okay, you don't take it off. No, yeah, it's dry. yeah which is why we'll do it next week, not yeah. this week. You, you can, of course, if you want to take home something very, very wet. Um, and I will, can't work any further on that until that's done. But um, this sky, I mightn't change it. I might go, actually, it's lovely, it's light. Skies are often the lightest part of the painting. It's light. I've gone a little darker and I'm going to put in some grasses, I think, at this stage some grasses, maybe some rocks, maybe. The other thing I'll do is put in some, um, I've got heaps of salt, so you don't have to bring any. Can you put in now, like another layer of something you do around there? Yes, salt in? I could, but, but I'm not gonna, I'll wait for that one as well, because, and then, that, yeah, I could do that together. It wouldn't be a problem. The other thing about this is that these blues change into a, I don't know, is this a, a grayer blue? Which yeah. doesn't suit my purpose because in landscapes, the distant mountain shapes, the distant shapes are grayer. So what I'm gonna do is put in some slightly darker color. I know it might look more like a river uh, than a seascape, but I don't care. I like suggesting things such as I'm coming forward, forward, forward. So that means I'm gonna put more tone here and have darker colors darker tones not darker.